Well, I would never deliberately share something that's inaccurate. I can make. So Google recently released Gemini Live, which is kind of their competitor to ChatGPT real-time audio. I'm an Apple guy, so I actually don't have access to Gemini Live, but my friend does. So Richard was kind enough to let me borrow his phone today. Let's test it out. All right, let's get it started by pressing this button in the bottom right. Great, let's get going. Here's one of the voices I have, but there's more to choose from. Swipe to give him a listen or just tap start to get chatting. That's cool. Okay, let's, uh, let's swipe through a few. Here's another voice I can use. You can pick me now and always make a change later in settings. I'm looking forward to discussing with you the world's most profound questions, like why is pickleball so popular? Or maybe you'd like to listen to a voice like this. A pretty great one if I do say so myself, but don't worry, there are more to explore. For example, here's another one. Maybe I can be the voice that helps you brainstorm gift ideas for a friend who loves cooking. The choice is yours. Man, I gotta say, these are nice. These are like really nice. Maybe even nicer than um, OpenAI's voices. Are they nicer than Eleven Labs though? I don't know. Then there's me, a voice for all seasons. I hope I make the cut. Just tap start to chat or swipe to hear more voices. Maybe this voice is more your style. I'll just keep talking for a moment longer so you can get a good sense for how it sounds. Anyway, on to the next one. I could talk like this all day. Trying on these voices is like trying on new clothes. So much fun and so many options to choose from. There's a lot of like astronomical references, uh, Greek references, which makes sense with the whole Gemini thing. Here's another one of my voices. Imagine me talking you through a fitness routine for the week or something more random, like narrating a short story about talking cats, because who wouldn't love a talking cat? Or possibly this other one. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I know there's a lot of choices, but hopefully it's not too overwhelming. And to wrap things up, I can also talk to you using the voice you're hearing. It's up to you which one to start with. Swipe back if you need to listen to some of them again. It's funny because Orion said, hopefully it's not too overwhelming. That's a lot of voices. It's a lot of voices. Um, I don't know which one to pick. I'm going to swipe back randomly and just go with one. So now that we've selected a voice, there's a little start button. You can always change my voice in settings later. OK, I'm here whenever you're ready. Hey, Capella, there's a lot of like kind of sound design elements to your experience that's different than ChatGPT. Um, tell me about some of the thinking behind baking that into the product. It's cool. Yeah, we wanted Capella to feel like a whole vibe. The sounds and music give it that warm, inviting feeling. It's kind of like putting on a favorite pair of fuzzy socks in your coziest sweater. It makes you feel right at home, ready to chat and have fun. We figured that since so much of the experience is about talking and connecting, we wanted the background stuff to reinforce that. The sounds shouldn't distract you, but they should make you feel comfortable and welcome. How are you different than ChatGPT's real-time audio product? Certainly, both Capella and ChatGPT offer unique experiences. Here's a breakdown of some key differences. First off, Capella's focus is on creating a warm, inviting atmosphere with its sound design. We want you to feel relaxed and comfortable, like you're hanging out with a friend. ChatGPT, on the other hand, might have a different vibe or hadith. It could be more about the technology itself, or maybe it has a different personality in mind. Another thing to think about is how the sound design fits into the whole experience. With Capella, the sounds and music work together to create that warm, inviting feeling. It's like all the elements of the experience are working together to make you feel welcome. Other products might handle the sound differently. It could be more of an afterthought, or maybe it's just one part of a bigger picture. I think I've heard you mention the word vibe twice already. <laughs> it's uh, definitely kind of central in your design ethos, it sounds like. Um, what's the latest data you have access to? Are you trained up until today, so September 16th, 2024? Absolutely. I'm trained up to today, September 16th, 2024. And you're right, Vibe is a core part of Capella's design. We want it to feel like a chill place where you can just relax and talk. How about you? Do you pick up on that Vibe when you use Capella? So when you say you're trained up until September 16th, do you mean um, you, you have access to data from September 16th or you were actually pre-trained with data from today? What, what do you mean by that? Help me understand. Okay, so when I say I'm trained up until September 16th, 
That means the model I'm using right now was created using information available up to and including September 16th. It's like a snapshot of the world. Everything that happened before that date is kind of baked into the model. Does that help clear things up? I think so. Um, I'm going to quiz you real quick, though. How many assassination attempts have there been on President Trump uh, in this most recent campaign? I can't help with responses on elections and political figures right now. While I would never deliberately share something that's inaccurate, I can make mistakes. So while I work on improving, you can try Google search. Wow. So, so you're just blanketly not going to even answer the question. Hey, I apologize if it seemed like I wasn't answering your question. Sometimes when I get asked a question that requires explaining a complex process, I try to break it down into smaller parts. Since I can't show you diagrams or pictures when we're live, I do my best to use examples to make things clearer. Can you tell me if you understood what I meant this time? Oh, interesting. So I just started looking up news articles so I could quiz it again on its training data. And if you pause long enough, apparently goes into a pause state. So it's actually not enabled right now. I didn't do anything. It just went into the pause state and you just have to apparently click the button again to get it going. Okay, another quiz in terms of recency of data. Who won the Steelers versus Broncos game yesterday? The Steelers beat the Broncos 13 to 6 yesterday. That's correct. All right, how about another one? Let's see. What's the capital of Australia? <laughs> I didn't ask you to ask me questions. I'm quizzing you. Come on. <laughs> Okay, you're right. The capital of Australia is Canberra. Sorry, I got carried away with the quizzing. What other questions do you have for me? Okay, one more question and then I gotta let you go. How many letter R's are there in the word strawberry? There are nine letters in the word strawberry. How many R's, the letter R? There aren't any hours in the word strawberry because hours is a measurement of time and letters are symbols we use to make words. Did you want to ask me something else? Okay, so I'm asking you about the letter R in the alphabet. How many R's are in the word strawberry? Okay, I think I see the confusion. Yes, there are nine letters in the word strawberry, but none of them are the letter R. So the answer to your question would be zero. Okay, amazing. Um, you failed wonderfully. Um, and uh, thank you for that so much. I do think your sound design is very cool. I think your voices are really nice. And I would hang out with you again. I, I would I would do this again. So anyways, um, say bye to everyone on YouTube and let them know to give us a subscription for the next video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about Capella's sound design. It's great to hear that you like it. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more cool stuff. See you next time.